In this final skills video, I'll go over what I mean when I say show something nice. Showing something nice is a bit abstract, uh, but it turns out that it really only has two fundamental applications. And once you recognize that, it's actually pretty easy to spot. And this will get you out of the most difficult derivations in sentential logic. Let's take a look at the left column first. We'll do two examples today. I'm pretending that this is a premise, premise two, P arrow Q arrow negation bracket Z and W close bracket. Always remember that what matters in every case, no matter what statement you're looking at, is the main connective. So here, the main connective is the conditional. And so what we're going to try and do is figure out how we can break this premise down. To break something down, you have to use the elimination rule. So the elimination rule for this conditional is, of course, modus ponens or modus tollens. And I can carve this up and say that this is the antecedent here, and this is the consequent there. Now, what we're going to pretend is we're going to pretend that we're stuck. Let's say we do all these automatic moves, and then we don't know what to do. And there's no proof structure to really help us. There's no contradiction on generators on the board. I'm totally stuck. Well, at this point, I'm staring at premise two, and I'm saying, what do I do? I don't have a clear option of what to do here, because let's pretend I don't actually have P arrow Q handy, and I don't have this handy. So at this point, uh, again, I'm just going to pretend I'm, I don't know, say at line 10 in my derivation. What I could do is I could show something nice. And showing something nice essentially means showing something that would facilitate the use of an elimination rule. So in this case, I could show something to facilitate the modus ponens, or I could show something to facilitate the modus tollens. So to show the modus something that would facilitate the modus ponens, I only have one option, and that would be I would really like to get or show P arrow Q. Why? Because if I was able to succeed at getting P arrow Q, then I could modus ponens premise 2, and that is a really nice move. Similarly, for the modus tollens, what I really want, so here I'll write want, is the negation of the negation of Z and W. But I'm not going to show that because of the double negation is really awkward. So I really know that this is perfectly equivalent to Z and W. So if I want Z and W, I could actually show Z and W. Now some of you might have spotted that this is actually a foolish line, and I agree. It's not smart to write show Z and W for the most part. What I should realize here is that I should apply some proof structure before I write my show line. So if I want Z and W, that really means I want Z on its own, and I want W on its own. So really, the smarter show lines here is just to show Z, and then later, show W. Why? Because if I succeeded, I would have these two, and I would go up here, and I would then uh, adjoin them, and I would go up here with a double negate. And of course, that would give me negation, negation, bracket Z and W, which is, of course, the negation of the consequent, which would let me modus tollens to get the negation of the antecedent. So here, showing something nice amounts to this show line or something like this, so that I could do the modus ponens or modus tollens. Which one do you pick? It actually doesn't really matter. You pick the one that you think is the easiest to get, and you're going to see this all the time in some of the trickier derivations, where you're stuck, but you see that you have a line with a conditional in it that you have not broken down, that's a big clue that you want to do a show line like one of these options here. Now let's move over to uh, this example. So here is um, P and Q, or negation X arrow Z. Now in this example, I'm just pretending I'm on, I'm on line 10. It doesn't matter that I'm just on line 10. The idea is sometimes you might find yourself with a line somewhere in your derivation and you can't do anything to it. Why? Because oh, I just don't really have the right parts. This is some massive disjunction. Well, the clue, of course, is that this disjunction is um, eliminated by a singular rule, and that rule is MTP. And MTP says that you, if you have the negation of one side, you can infer the other. That's the or elimination rule. So that immediately tells you what you want. What you really want, then, is the negation of one of these sides. 
So if I want the negation of the left side, I want negation P and Q. Well, there's no real proof structure analysis here, so that would mean that I would just write show negation P and Q, and then I could assume ID it and move on. So this is one option for the MTP. The other option for the MTP is to show the negation of this side. But again, I'm not going to write show double negation. If I want to get the negation of the negation of x arrow z, I know that I could just get x arrow z and then go back up here using double negate. I know I can do that. But how do I get x arrow z? That requires a show line. So now I know I could just show x arrow z and I could start a conditional uh, derivation there. So either of these two show lines would get me out of a jam so that I know what to do here. This is a bit tricky to understand and is really best done when you're really stuck in a proof and you go through proof structure contradiction generators and you get nowhere. What you want to look for are lines that have conditionals in them that you haven't eliminated and lines that have disjunctions in them that you haven't eliminated. And then if you have the conditional side, you either want to show the antecedent or show the negation of the consequent for the modus tollens. And if you have a disjunction, you want to show the negation of the left side or you want to show the negation of the right side. What I've added to these general rules here in this example is how proof structure can sort of help you out to get smarter show lines. But it doesn't really matter if you don't see this immediately. As long as eventually you get what you want, uh, you will be able to solve the proof. Showing something nice is the trickiest skill. And uh, I hope this video makes it clear. And you'll see me use this regularly in some of the more difficult questions that I demonstrate on these videos.